acknowledgement. Through our willingness to help others, we can learn to be happy rather than depressed. Gerard Jamboski I would like to first thank my lovely, beautiful, and elegant best friend and former wife, Shoshana, for her heartfelt loyalty towards me as well as tremendous sacrifice she has made to help me by still being there for and raising our three beautiful children. Her contribution to the quality of this book has been immensable. She and I do not always agree on my view in life, but we do compromise in how my words should be used in my book. My gratitude to all who have been here for me is very sincere. I have not always treated her fairly over the years, and yet she has remained supportive and present. Regardless of my behavior, she has proven herself stronger than either of us could have imagined. She has stood by me when no one else would, not out of necessity or obligation. She was there for me even after our divorce, when my life took several negative turns. This required that I confront and acknowledge my wrongdoing and, to some extent, prove my actual role in our fortunate circumstance. I paid dearly for my mistake, however, I have very little regret for the time I had to spend paying for my discretion in detention center in both Canada and the United States. These experiences have helped me focus and reevaluate myself. How I behave, how I think, and how I treat and have treated others. In addition, my experience has given me the opportunity to write the book you are now reading. My biggest regret, however, are missing my son's bar mitzvah and my children's birthdays. These are moments and experience in my children's life that I have lost and they have suffered from my absence. I wish to express my sincerest appreciation as well as my heartfelt gratitude to my three gorgeous and bright children. I want to thank my son Aaron and my twin daughters, Ariel and Layla for always being there for me especially after my last breakup with Jezebel. This hurt them emotionally. They'd be my greatest supporters and I cannot love them more than I do at this moment. I now understand that they and their mother love me unconditionally more than I could have ever realized. None of my work endeavors will overshadow the supreme importance of my family. I spend my energy on my loved ones, an investment that will have an abundantly fortifying return. They are my core reason for being. I would also like to thank my mother, Maria, for not giving up on me when I was going through these difficult emotional and spiritual moments. I want to credit those who have helped edit this book and who have given their opinion on keeping it real and not losing its message. Therefore, I want to thank Enrique Guerrero, Shuri Meyer, and ex-wife Shoshana for the contribution. I also must thank others who near the end of this book inspired me. They allow my philosophy of life and my love to help them in their lives. I wish to thank Roman Brave, who I have known for over 30 years, and Avalo Marinov, who I have known for over 18 years. I would also like to acknowledge Diablo Santana and Mike Thomas. I had the privilege of meeting them in Rivière de Paris Institution in Montreal, Quebec. In addition, Lenny Anaya, Ruben Porcher, Ernest Apollon, Jason Robinson, Jonathan Campbell, Christian Bicardi, Michael J. Moore, and Anthony Moore from the Donald W. White Detention Faculty in Central Fall, Rhode Island. They have each taken the time to read a portion of my book and offer the remark of strong encouragement and constructive criticism. 
I've asked myself for years, why am I here? The answer has always been in front of me. People of all age always came to me for advice. My teachers told me I should have been a counselor, as did Shoshana. However, I took two strangers, one from my own city and the other from San Diego, to see my true calling, my true potential. It took a correctional institution to wake me up. I wrote, and as a result, many inmates opened their eyes and their ears to my teaching. They became aware and they awoke. Some say I have built a following, yet they are not followers. They did not become proud for what I had to offer is not for me, but a higher source. You would say to me, what I read means whatever you want or require it to mean. No, it means what it means. My being in cars had made me think hard about life so that I make the right decision to lead a better lifestyle. This enabled me to be free. Additionally, in prison, there is no noise or turmoil to disturb one as there is in free society. This helped me think clearly and honestly about improving my life without disturbance. Please note, expressing myself either verbally or in writing has never been my strength. I jumble my words, I misspell. What I want to say or express, the concept and ideas, the thoughts, the suggestion, the meaning behind my words, however, has been and still is my strongest ability. I'm difficult to understand, especially when I speak. How I articulate and enunciate my words are not as clear as they are when I write. Writing allows me to think and express myself in a clear fashion. Although this is very true, my audience seems to appreciate this quality about me. They say it makes me more real and believable. Writing has helped me express myself more creatively and clearly does improve my memory and precision as well as other aspects of my performance when teaching to a live audience. I was born in France but grew up in Montreal. My parents are Italian, I was raised as Catholic and then became a Jehovah's Witness. In my late twenties I converted to Judaism and set on to Jewish history. Following that, I have studied all beliefs from Buddhism to Islam. At this point in my life, I am more aware of spiritual consciousness, as I feel that all belief has some truth to them, and I consider them as one. I do not believe in a God, since there are many gods. I believe there is an original entity that is above all gods, who are called by many names. Being in a detention faculty made me aware of my inner self. Now I know my path, my true path. Now I know I can achieve whatever I want. It also allowed me to see myself for who I was in the past and who I am now with full understanding. I move to work, not work to move. There is no such thing as luck. You make your fortune on thoughts and hard, smart work, never luck. Believing in luck is giving away your power. I, on the other hand, control my power with the universe beside me. The ancient universal law of creation has many more laws underneath it. I was aware of this power before I heard of Rhonda Burns book on the law of attraction. On Sunday, March 7, 2010, I finally watched a part of the secret on youtube.com and I was amazed to see that what it talked about was word for word what I was writing about in my book. This was before I saw or read her work and heard comments from those who were in her videos. I became aware of a similar perspective on the view presented on this page when observing the work done in The Secret by Rhonda Burns. 
It is amazing how we are each connected. When I was originally writing my book in a detention faculty, my work was being compared to that of James Redfield, Arthur of the Celestial Prophecy, and Rhonda Byrne, Arthur of the Secret. I still have not read their books, but plan to read them one day. At the moment, I do not want to be influenced by other people's work until after my books are published. This way I cannot be accused of plagiarism. The book that motivated me in this belief was by Wallace Delas Walters, author of The Science of Getting Rich, written in 1910. Thank you. Peace and love, Gino.